Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, it's fair to say that QuickBooks sold traders cut off to a cracking start. And I mean that because all the clients that I've moved over in my firm have really enjoyed the fact that they're able to have a overall better experience than they had with QuickBooks Self-Employed. And it's a good job really, because for those who don't know, QuickBooks Self-Employed is now no longer available to buy new, and it's slowly but surely gonna be sunsetting away. So there's gonna be a lot of people who are going to have to make the jump from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Old Trader. And one of the things I've been asked on a mammoth amount of times is, Aaron, how do I move from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Old Trader? What's the way of doing it? Now, unfortunately, there's no magic button and move from one to the other, which is really one of the reasons why Soul Trader is so much better for you out there, because QuickBooks Soul Trader is by far the easiest way to move from Soul Trader to Simple Start and Above, because all you do is click one button and just like that is instantly improved. So I love the fact that it's there. But, and this is a big but now, to have that seamless upgrade path, you need to be on Soul Trader and not QuickBooks Self-Employed. So in this video, we're gonna teach you how to move from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Soul Trader. Let's go. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo. That QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Boffix, and your multi-platinum winner who has won both the Digital Disruptor Award for this year and also, don't forget, the hero behind the hero awards by QuickBooks themselves. And finally, I'm also a podcaster. Goes live each and every Monday morning for Ask the Accountant. Now in today's video, this is gonna be really important for us, right? This is how we move all of our data from, from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Sole Trader. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it and figure out exactly how we do that. Okay, let's do a premise of what's in front of me now. So as you can see in front of me, you will see that on the left-hand side is QuickBooks Self-Employed. Hopefully people can recognize that who are coming from QuickBooks Self-Employed. And on the right-hand side is QuickBooks Sole Trader. And our job is pretty simple. We've got to get the information from here and move it over to here. How are we going to do that? Well, first and foremost, and this is important if you move anything around from anywhere, if you're doing what we call migration of data. If you're going from one system to another, the first thing you'll do is make sure that first system is as clean as it possibly can be. So if you've not already gone through and do some of those checks, also think about when you're going to make this move. For me, the most important time to make this move is just after the end of a tax year. Make sure that You've gone into your left-hand side, your QuickBooks self-employed, and you've cleaned everything up so that that tax year is complete and full for them. You don't have to do that. You can move mid-year, but you're always going to give yourself some opportunity to have some sort of issue problem, some sort of duplication, some sort of problem that you probably want to avoid. So to avoid all of those problems, just finish your tax year in QuickBooks self-employed, then move over to QuickBooks Sole Trader. But either way of doing that, you still want to make sure that the last set of data that you have to that last period in QuickBooks self, Self-Employed is going to be as clean as it possibly can be. So, for example, you're making sure that things like you go to your transactions page, you go through your transactions, and you're making sure that everything's been accounted for. Is this income all accounted for? Is this expense all accounted for? You want to go through every single one of these. And what I'd highly recommend you do is you search for just your unreviewed transactions and go through clearing them all off. You need every transaction you can think of to be available in this period. Once you've got to a point where everything's unreviewed and everything's clean and tidy, that's when you can start thinking about how you're going to get the information from there to there. So once you're happy that all the data is there, head over to the reports area on your left-hand panel and go to tax details. Now the idea of the tax detail is we want to find what tax year we're about to download. Press the download function. Call where it's going to save. And if I open up this file, you'll see this file is really, really powerful because it gives me the summary detail here, which we're gonna to use to our advantage. It gives us then details of each of them there. Now, that is dummy data, but if this was real data, you're gonna have every single transaction you can think of accounted for in this one file. So it's a great one. As long as you can be confident that this file is correct and that everything is there, this is a fantastic file to use and as your supporting document for making that transfer. So I've got this file now and I'm really happy with it. And all I need to do now, let's make this one a little bit bigger because we don't need this left-hand side anymore. 
is head over to my QuickBook Soul Trader. Now, if you've already started on it, no problem whatsoever. Remember, especially in this period here, I'm thinking about going through and I'm going to be doing that previous tax year. I'm only really bringing that information in just as a bit of an opportunity for me to keep on top of it, just to use it as a bit of supporting documents, that sort of thing. But I have two ways of doing it. The first one is if I don't have access to an accountant. And what I will do here is, as myself, is I'll use these new transaction buttons there. Make sure that the date range is set to the date range that you've done. So in my case, it's going to be the 5th of the 4th, 2024. And I'm literally going to go through and put each transaction in there. So I had £10,000. £10,000 as income, put that one in, put that up against business person, as business income, and when it says who do you paid, I'm actually going to say, I'm going to call it opening balance, so everyone knows, I'm in my notes, opening balance, this was an opening balance that I'm using, so I'll add that one, new transaction, put in expense as well, this time £5,000 cost of sales, call it again, open and balance, £5,000, and I'll add it into there, and I'd keep going until I've added all of these transactions in, and basically until I got the ability to come back to what my total is going to be. Also, when it comes to where I'm going to save it, if I jump into my accountant area, shared document, so there's a really nice area here where I can upload from device, grab the file that we've got to do, bring that in there, rename it, I'm going to call it opening balance 24-25 tax year. And that way I've got ability to be able to go in and say exactly what it's related to. And I can change it as well. I'm going to leave it as over on this one, opening balance 2024. Probably just to be safe on those bank transactions, when I go back to those transactions that have been put in there, I probably do want to do uh, opening balance. And I'll say per file and say where the file is. Or I could even just drag and drop and just put the file into there if I convert this to like a PDF or document like that. So they're the ways in which I would get the information in there. And that's going to be our way of you being able to transfer the, the whole data, basically, one to the other. Now, the second way of doing that is to contact your account accountant. Because if you've got an accountant attached to this, they have an option under accountant tools. So this is accountant only feature to do what's called a journal entry. And from a journal entry, they can go through and they line by line can put that in there. So I can go make sure first of all it's the right date. So 5th of 4th, 2004. And I can go in and I can say, uh, I can go business income. And I can say it was £10,000. Cost of sales. I can say it was 5000 and then the best thing about this is I can even go to this attachments area down here. I can attach that and everything's happy. Now remember, this is an accountant only feature. The other thing about accountant doing this for you as well is if you've already put transactions in and then you're bringing it over, they can do what's called an opening balance adjustment, where what they're going to do is post the difference of the two. So if you've already put, say, three months of it in, this one's telling the rest, they can amalgamate the two and make it a lot cleaner. And they can restate that period that they've brought in to the period that they think is correct. So they're going to have a lot more options. But by using this opening balance journal, putting it through from there, that means that next time when I go to my reports, look at my profit and loss. Choose the period that's in that, that I'm interested in. So in case in this case it's this financial period. Run report. You'll see that now it's but my business income now has two of them included now because I've been putting there. But again, this dummy data in the real world, you want to clear that down, then add it in on top from there. And to me, that's the easiest way of moving it over. Get your QuickBooks self-employed as clean as you possibly can download that tax detail report for the relevant year, use that as your supporting document, get that into QuickBooks Sole Trader either by individual transactions or, and you can do the totals when you do those individual transactions, or you can ask an accountant to go in and add a journal entry for you to put it through there.
If you don't have a journal entry, then don't worry. Here at Boffix, use the links below. Go over to our website. We even have opportunities where we can do that migration for you. Get that all in there. And we can make sure that we can use those journal entries to make it nice and clean and tidy to put that in there as well. Other things to note when you're talking to your accountant about QuickBooks Sole Trader, your accountant can decide for you as the end user what chart of accounts they have. So you're under the manage mapping areas as an accountant, remember this accountant only feature, but they will be able to go through and decide what your categories are. So if you've got particular categories that you want your accountant to include, let them know, put it through from there. Again, if you don't have an accountant, reach out to us at Boffix. We can go through and put that in there for you for a service. And that's it. That's how you're gonna get the data from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Sole Trader. Dead straightforward. And the key is not to overcomplicate this. The whole point of QuickBooks Old Trade is to make this super, 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 super simple. As long as you've got that tax detail file just there, that's everything that you need to do to get that information over to you. And then for you, you're gonna be on target to be able to make sure that everything's put into the right place. My name's been Alan Patrick. Hopefully this video has been useful for you. Let me know in the comments below. Have you had the transfer yet? Are you looking to make the transfer? Have you decided to move to QuickBooks Old Trader? Put the comments below. I'm sure we can have a chat about it. My name is Aaron Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Party.